Before we get started with the video, I just want to give a huge shout out to our sponsors over at Burton Racing. They actually sent over two, not one, but two care packages to give back to the community. This isn't stuff that's going on my car. This is actually stuff that we had requested specifically for you guys. Just like us, Burton Racing loves giving back to the community. We all help each other. We all want to see the community grow and the products that they offer are phenomenal. That being said, go check out the description right now. I have their Instagram and website linked. If you're not waiting for the giveaway and you want to buy something that they have on their website right now, make sure to use discount code SP tuning exactly as is, as is written on our channel S P T U N I N G. And uh, you can use the discount code right there. And then if you want this free giveaway, make sure to stay until the end of this video because we're gonna be telling you exactly how you can win these mystery packages. And I'll actually unbox one and show you exactly what's in it and give you even more enthusiasm to get this because let me tell you, I kind of wanted to put this on the car, but it's more important to reach back to the community and have something given back to you guys. That being said, let's get this video started and I'll go over the details later at the end of this video. drive Honda CRX. Uh, in the last video that I uploaded, I mentioned what we're going to be doing today. On the left side or the passenger side, I've already went ahead and did the modification that we're doing on this video. On the driver side, it's still OEM. Uh, one thing before I actually show you, there is an aftermarket lower control arm right here. It's also on this side of the car. It's OEM on the other side. I was going to rock these, but the ball joint uh, mechanism isn't fitting into that area. So I actually have some different lower control arms on the way. Ignore what control arm is on it at the moment. All we're looking at is the traction bar mechanism. So essentially, on the traction bar, you have one Heim joint, goes to an adjustability rod, radius rod if I'm not mistaken, and then it has two locking nuts. And it goes over here onto one Heim joint to the lower control arm. And then off of this, there's a little bracket on top that lets it attach with a spacer to the back hole. Uh, that's on the car. Let me show you off the car with this control arm for uh, reference. So essentially you have it right here. You have the Heim joint attaches to the first bolt hole right there and then runs a bracket right there. The problem with that, you have a Heim joint and a Heim joint and then you have an external bracket right there. It holds a little bit, but the rigidity that you want on the lower control arm to keep it stable isn't there. You have a lot of side to side and up and down play and it really just sucks at holding it solid. Uh, you really want to hold the lower control arm solid because you don't want your axle moving around. So instead of rocking this, what we did on the other side, and I'll show you in just a second, we ended up cutting the Heim joint right here and adding a piece of flat steel that will go from the first bolt hole straight onto the back bolt hole as well. By doing that, we basically make a solid mounting point onto the lower control arm. And here's for reference, you can see right there. Obviously, when I drilled the holes onto the piece of flat steel for this side, I didn't drill it correctly, so it's kind of offsetted, and it looks like it's not gonna adjust very well, but that's not an issue. Uh, it still moves the arm back and forth when you adjust it by using this rod right there. But if you can kind of get the point of what we're doing, there is no room for error right here. This is fully bolted onto the control arm, and there's no, there's no like side to side play or back and forth play because it's a solid piece of flat steel. From the factory, that's how it is. With the OEM radius bars, it is one piece of flat steel that sits over it and it holds it 100% tight. The problem with the factory one is you have a lot less clearance on the front. They normally come up to right here. With aftermarket ones, you have a lot more clearance. And also on the front ones, they have these big bushings that wear out over time. Now, if you're not running anything that you need, the extra clearance down below, they sell the solid bushings and you can get away with that. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you want the extra room and the adjustability of the aftermarket traction bars, this is definitely something you wanna do. And if you don't wanna dish out the $400 for the aftermarket ones, you can't budget it at the moment. This is a nice little trick to get around it and still have good adjustability and a strong solid mounting point for the lower control arm. That being said, I took uh, maybe about three hours the other day taking everything apart, measuring, cutting, deciding exactly how I wanted to do, welding it here at home, and actually decide what I wanna show you guys on the other side, now being the driver's side when I do it, because I didn't wanna do the first clip and mess up or find out that it's gonna take a little longer to do things and not give you guys a good product. So I wanna show you how I do it on the other side right now. Uh, that way, I already did my R&D, if you will, and um, we can actually do it correctly or a little better than the last time. That being said, I'm going to start by unbolting 
the uh, suspension in sense of the fork, just so I have a little more room to mess around with everything, which is right over here attached to the bottom of the coilover. This is basically the suspension fork. Uh, this is what holds the coilover onto the lower control arm while still allowing the axle to pass through. This is very simple to unbolt. There's a 14 millimeter head, which you have to take off right there, 14 millimeter socket. Then there's a 17 at the bottom with a nut on the other side, and that comes off super easy. And then from that point forward, if I'm not mistaken, the hardware that I already had on the lower control arm is an 18 millimeter socket that I need to use. Now it may vary depending on what kind of bolts and what traction bar you may have, but most are either 17, 18, or 19 millimeter uh, sockets for the lower control arm bolts right there. So the control arm's out, and now for the adjustable arm on the traction bar, I'm just gonna unthread this completely. As for the adjustment later, I'm gonna unthread that side as well and then uh, get them both even so you can have perfect adjustability, but I'll show you that later. But uh, basically, what we're gonna be doing is this heim joint right here. It's gonna get cut right about right there and uh, then get welded onto a flat piece of metal instead of having that joint right there and uh, should give us a lot of a more sturdy mount. You can see how much I cut off the other one, just about right there. You can see right past the the heim joint itself. So uh, right about right there, we'll make the rough cut. And uh, when we actually get to portion where we start welding, we're just gonna actually cut a piece of flat steel and have it meet up at that same area. Moving over to our flat piece of steel, our flat steel, whatever you wanna call it. Um, we just marked up the length or the distance, excuse me, from each hole to each hole on the lower control, control arm. And uh, then I'll cut accordingly on both sides. Uh, kind of what I like to do, and, or what I did for the other side at least, I lined up essentially the first hole for the heim joint as it originally goes. I marked where I was going to cut after this is already in place, where I was going to cut right here on the heim joint, and then where I was going to cut it in correspondence to the flat seal. That way the distance will be very close to the same. Now mind you, this doesn't have to be 100% uh, the exact same length because of this right here, which is our full adjustment. Look at all this adjustability that we have. But we wanna keep it as square as possible. So there's a little bolt. When we do that line right there, for example, we'll cut the flat steel and then right there, we'll cut the heim joint. And uh, I'll actually leave a flat seal a little bit longer. And what I did last time, I uh, here's the heim joint. I kind of bellowed it. I think that's the, the term. The heim joint cut right here and then made a little groove on the inside. That way the flat seal can kind of sit in its place which helped a lot when I tacked it up. So uh, that's pretty much how I decided to go about with the length that I cut it at. And then obviously this is gonna be the back end. Uh, you can cut it right after the hole. I'll probably do it just so I have a little bit of extra room after the bolt. So in this case, I'll probably cut the back end right there. And then this is what's gonna get welded onto that actual heim joint. And um, if you notice, there is a little bit of play in the holes that I did, especially on the back one. Because when I lined it up just now with the, the lower control arm, uh, when I used the punch to center my holes for the distance, it was a little bit off, probably about the size of a thread off of the bolt. And uh, I didn't want any binding or any stripped bolts in the future or in the control arm or anything. So what I did, I just cut it, a or I drilled it a little bit bigger using a step bit, which I have on my drill right there. And uh, that allows for a little back and forth movement if it's necessary. By the time it's clamped down, it's not gonna do anything different. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it right there. I'm gonna go ahead and do my measurements real quick and cut this flat steel and uh, place it back onto the arm, which is on the car, and go from there. There we go, I cut the piece of steel that I needed to. Now we have it lined up, and I actually have it nut and bolted on there so uh, I can get a clear view of where I wanna cut it. Like I said, I'm gonna cut a little bit more in on the heim joint part and have this part a little bit more out just so I can kinda, kinda get it in a groove afterwards. But I'm just using a regular cutoff wheel. Gonna give that a cut right there. The reason I'm putting it right here and bolting it on is so I have a, you know, a, a free hand that I can, I don't have to hold this, you know? Or if you have a vise at home, you can do that as well. But this is what I'm gonna do right now. And I'll give it a cut. We've got our two parts and I uh, cleaned up a little on this side to be able to weld on a clean material. Cleaned up a little bit on this side just to put the ground on it. And then uh, I'm not too crazy about how this cut came out right there, but I don't think it'll be too bad given that at least one side of it could have a little angle and we can fill in the rest. But I'm gonna mock this up on the car real quick and um, see if we can get it tack welded. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is the next morning. I know I had, uh, I wanted to finish it last night, but I couldn't. 
But uh, basically we have on the lower control arm bolted on loosely just so it's nice and comfortable right now. And um, that's already on, in place and the heim joint that's been cut is in place. Obviously the natural geometry of how the spindle sits is gonna be a little bit back or forward depending on how you have everything tightened. I don't have the lower control arm tightened. I don't have the suspension fork on right now. So this is actually really free to move. And uh, when it's in its place, it sits naturally a little bit further forward. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna uh, hold it forward. Obviously I can't right now because I'm with the camera. And uh, then I'll tack weld it into place and then I'll show you what it looks like once it's already tack welded. And then we can do the full uh, weld after we make sure that the geometry is correct. Tacked on the back and the front, turning off my welder, and i um, <clears throat> gonna unbolt that right now and then show you guys off the car and weld it a lot better off the car. Here's the part that's just tack welded onto place. One small tack right there, one small tack right there. It looks really dirty. I'm gonna clean it up right now with the wire wheel, make sure it's nice and <clears throat> clean before I do the full weld all around. And I'm gonna do one side, then the other side, and then the corners like melted in like I did on the other side. And the other side came out pretty good. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the other side came out pretty good, so I'm just gonna do pretty much the same on this. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna start that up right now. That came out a little better. I'm on max and two with wire speed five. It's a crappy welder, so. It came out okay right there, you guys can see. Other side came out bad, but right there it's not bad. I'm just gonna hit it right here on the inside a little more. And I think I'll be okay. Here we go. It's fully welded all around, top, bottom, and corners. Now I'm just going to hit it with a little spray paint, spray paint so it won't end up rusting in the future. All right, I've got the paint right now drying on that welded piece that we just did. And one thing I pride myself is cleanliness of a garage, and right now my garage is absolutely atrocious. So before continuing anything and taking advantage of the downtime that we have that it's being dried, I'm going to go ahead and clean up the garage. I'm not going to do crazy stuff like re reorganizing anything, but I really want to get all the tools situated, get the welder back into its place, table back folded up, drill bits back into the drill bit container, and just clean up all the trash that I have over here. That being said, I will see you guys in for you guys just a second and for me about half an hour. Garage is nowhere near spotless, but it's a lot cleaner, and a lot more organized. We can actually walk through now. And uh, this is all nice and dry, ready to go. Obviously, I'm not looking for a show paint job or anything, but I wanted it to be coated. That way there's no, not no chance, but a lot less of a chance of there to be in any rust buildup or anything like that. Uh, if you have anti seize you can also put it on these threads. That way it stays nice and lubricated. Uh, what I'm going to do right now is fully unthread the top portion. And the reason I'm doing this is because of adjustability and how we're actually going to get both ends of the rod to have the same amount of thread inside of this rod right there. So what I'm going to do is um, it's going to be a little hard to actually get it over the lower control arm since this is such a big piece. So what I'm going to do is put one thread in right here, one thread. Then I'm gonna set this over the lower control arm so it's already in place. And I'm gonna get this right there, thread it on one thread. And this is reverse thread. One side is always reverse thread so you can have adjustability. And now while holding it, holding this end, this end is held onto the traction bar. I'm uh, just spinning counterclockwise, I believe this is, to get the bar to where it needs to be. That's how you adjust your traction bar. 
but it's important to have both threads, both ends, the same length. Okay, now I have it to about where it's comfortably on the lower control arm. I'm gonna go ahead and add the bolts that I have for it. All right, we've got the second bolt pretty snug on the back end. Over here, since there's an axle in the way, obviously, I'm gonna tighten it with the wrench. Mind you, I'm not gonna tighten it all the way on either of the bolts, just because the geometry of the suspension still isn't at where it's gonna sit comfortably. Now, there's two things that I haven't done either. I haven't uh, tightened the lower control arm mounting bolt to the subframe yet, and I haven't put a cotter pin in the ball joint on the bottom. Ball joint, cotter pin, I just haven't put it on because I just haven't gotten to that step. Right here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tighten it once it's already loaded, like this. See how I move the spindle up like around where the wheel is gonna sit? That way it doesn't bind the bushing or anything. A lot of times people put new bushings onto cars, especially on control arms. They go ahead and tighten it while the suspension is all loose. And then when the car actually raises, it'll rip the bushing. And your brand new bushing is as bad as the one that you just decided to change. If you wanted to do this at home, I'd recommend, uh, if you're already buying new hardware, to get one either with a flange or just put a washer on there. It's not 100% necessary, but aesthetically wise, I always like bolts with flanges. It's just one of my things, I guess you could call it. Now I'm gonna put uh, the fork. It'll actually bring up the suspension a little to the uh, spot that it's gonna be once everything's all bolted together. If you can see, I don't know if the camera's yeah, you can see right there, the fork actually sits higher than where the control arm is right now. That being said, once I actually bolt on the fork to the control arm, it's gonna bring the spindle up. For those of you wondering what kind of suspension I have, this is actually function and form type one. Uh, this is the regular front coil over the back actually has a stiffer spring that they af offer an aftermarket replacement. And it's actually, Integra suspension, DC. And the way that I made it fit, I just run Integra DC uh, forks, and it bolts right onto EF or CRX, everything is, is the exact same. Now you see how we just lifted everything, and now the fork is pretty much very close to how it's gonna be with the wheel and sitting on the ground. On the ground, it's gonna sit a little bit higher. As you can see, the suspension starts loading right there. Just a little bit, but that's good enough for us to actually tighten down the, uh, the lower control arm mounting bolt, as well as the bolts right here on that little ear that we welded on. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten everything up right now. Tight, 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 and uh, tight right there. We are all set on this side. Now the next thing would be adjustability. And obviously this is fully adjustable just like the other side. And since we did this one after, I feel like the adjustability is actually a little bit smoother on this side, which I like more. The other side, it binded a little bit, but um, once we actually put this on the alignment rack, we can get the perfect adjustability on this side. Just gonna go ahead and put a cotter pin right now in the lower ball joint, that way we don't forget. And uh, this is a little cotter pin assortment that I got at Harbor Freight. Real good investment. Whenever you take a ball joint out, it's always important to change the cotter pin. And I'm not even looking, I'm just setting it in there and bending the cotter pin around. And that's nice and secure. Look at that. This costs like $5, I think. And it took 15, 20 seconds to put that lower ball joint cotter pin in. And you're nice and secure right there. As you can see, fully solid right there. There you can see, fully adjustable and ready to rock and roll right there. Woo, she's pre sitting pretty. The four AV12s, 245 all around. I haven't put the drive shaft on yet because there is a lot of uh, like grease and oil underneath the car. 
from when the catch can had the wrong fitting at the bottom. And I really wanna get the car pressure washed underneath before I put the drive shaft back on, just so I can get all the nice little crevices. But uh, man, she's looking good. I might play with the suspension a little in the front. It's sitting just a tad too high in uh, correspondence to the back. But um, yeah, we'll see. I mean, I'm in no rush right now. So, you know, lower control arm is on. Uh, the new modifications we did are on as well. The only thing left to do right now is do an alignment. So I'm pretty stoked with how it's looking. But uh, I want to give it a, like a little drive before I do alignment so the suspension settles. And then I might be able to adjust the, the ride height just a little bit lower. So then we have everything set to how we want it before we actually do the alignment. What's up, everybody? If you made it to the end of the video, now, now we're gonna go over exactly what this is and how you can win it. We have two, not one, but two Boost by Gear kits that were given away to you guys. Now, we could have uh, kept this on the website and sold it. We could have put this on the CRX, but I, I really wanna give back to the community just as much as Burton Racing wants to hook you guys up as well. And this is a plug and play kit. So right over here, we have the Max Solenoid with a pigtail and a connector. That way it's super clean in your engine bay as well as the push lock fittings. It's not regular vacuum hoses, it's push lock fittings with the necessary Teflon already on the fittings. And most importantly, the line that you need to use with these specific push lock fittings. Now this is a full plug and play kit. You can put this on Honda, you can put this on a chip DCU, you can even wire it into like an AM standalone if that's what you have. But this is actually a kit that's offered on the Burton Racing website. We're giving away two of them for free. So we're gonna have two different winners. No matter where you are in the world, if you win this, I'm gonna ship it out to you free of cost. All on us, you don't have to worry about a thing. All you worry about is putting it onto your car. That being said, it's super easy on how to win it. I'm gonna direct you guys right now to my Instagram, at Slow Integra, because I have about a two minute video that I'm about to upload on how to do it at home, how to actually win this giveaway, and it's super easy. Basically, all you have to do is be following my account, at Slow Integra, be following the Burton Racing account, which is right here on the screen as well, and after you're following us on the video that I upload to my Instagram on my feed, all you have to do is tag two people. Each time you tag two people, that's an entry right there. And you can do a thousand entries. You can do 10,000 entries. I don't care. The more people you tag, the more entries you do, the bigger the chances that you have that you're going to win this boost by year kit. It's super easy on how do I select somebody. If I have 10 comments or if I have 5,000 comments, I scroll to the very top and to the very bottom. I load every single comment and I scroll from the top to the bottom multiple times, randomly have somebody tell me when to stop. I stop on a name and if that person is following my account and Burton Racing's account, they are the winners. Super easy on how to do it. Like I said, head over to my Instagram. The video, by the time that uh, this video is uploaded on YouTube, it'll be the last post that I have. I hope everybody has a great chance at winning this and it goes to somebody that deserves it. Hopefully it's somebody that can put it to good use and um, yeah, we're just trying to help out people. That being said, thanks for watching this video guys. We're gonna see you on the next one. Thank you for tuning in. Big shout out to Burton Racing again. Make sure to go check them out and if you aren't wanting to get the Boost Bike Gear Kit because you wanna check out their other products, check out the link in the description and don't forget to use the discount code SPTUNING to save the most money possible. We'll see you on the next one, guys. Have a great day and peace out.